you're a veteran, and a couple of weeks ago, Donald Trump threatened to use the military on peaceful protesters and protesters just in general. Um, and this is something that really struck me because this is very explicitly against the First Amendment. You know, he had Attorney General William Barr gas peaceful protesters so he can have a path cleared for him to take a photo in front of a church that everyone has seen by now. How do you respond to that as a veteran? Like, if you got the call to basically shut down a protest, which I'm assuming uh, would happen violently if we're using the military, how do you how do you respond to that as a veteran? Do you object to what they're saying? Speak to this, because I feel like this is something that people need to hear from, especially if, if you are a veteran. Like, your voice in this conversation is really important. Uh I I think probably the best thing you could do in that circumstance would be disassemble your weapon, throw it on the ground and join the demonstrators um, and just openly say, I'm not going to follow an unlawful order because that's what it is. And there will be consequences to that because it might say in the Uniform Code of Military Justice that you don't have to follow an unlawful order, but that's not going to be figured out until you're court-martialed. Hmm. And so um, it's it's right and wrong. It, it, there might be tough consequences, but right and wrong, you know, what the right decision is. Uh, and that's part of how earning conservative votes, um, I think, really starts is let's talk about the Constitution. First Amendment doesn't have a bedtime. You know, Second Amendment, I wish we fought for every other one as hard as people fight for that Second Amendment. Because you know what? When you put someone to death by need of the neck, when they haven't had due process, they haven't a day in court, they haven't had a jury by their peers and you've given them cruel and unusual punishment as their death, something no court in the land would sentence someone to. So no one court in the land would say, we're going to execute you by knee to the neck. But that happens on the streets in America every day. You bring it to those terms, that's bad news for the people who stand for existing structures. And I fully encourage uh, my friends uh, and, and brothers and sisters in arms who are still serving, don't follow unlawful orders. Don't do it. You want to be on the right side of history. Based on like your social circles um, within the military, do you think that most would comply or do you think that they would actually not follow through with, you know, an unlawful order? Because I feel like there would be consequences for them if they didn't listen. They would be reprimanded. Um, so, you know, they're, you're balancing what's right with self-interest and not wanting to be punished. So just, you know, based on your experience, I know that you wouldn't follow an unlawful order. But do you think that a majority of people in the military would follow that unlawful order? Because this really set up a conversation about, you know, what is the role of the military? And I think that most people who are reasonable agree that it's not to be used against its own people. You know, it, it's that's not what the military is for. Um, so what do you think would happen in the event he actually did order the military to come through and shut down a protest? How would that play out in your view? Would there be a mutiny? What would happen if we're you know, allowed to kind of speculate here? Yeah, and that's a tough question to answer because it really digs to the core of our nation's military leaders' hearts and souls and morals and values. But I think most of the military do the right thing. I do. I don't think that our soldiers would open fire. And then now you asked me the same question about police. Absolutely. They, they, they act like they're an occupying force in our own country. But our military folk, I think there's an understanding. You know, I think that there's there's more of an understanding that we're here. Our, our, the, the people the military is supposed to be protecting are here in this country, even the people we don't like, even the people we disagree with. You know, when I enlisted, I didn't enlist to just protect Democrats or just protect Republicans. Um, when you're fighting, you're fighting for the people you despise. When I was, you know, deployed on on my two non-combat deployments, I was there were Klansmen in the United States and all sorts of people who um, I detest, but they're also being protected by our military. So I, 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 I have faith that our, our military would do the right thing and not harm our own citizens. Yeah, thanks for speaking to that. I know it's difficult because we're kind of trying to psychoanalyze a lot of people. But, you know, this is this has really got, you know, a lot of people thinking, like, what would happen in this instance? Because this would be unprecedented. I mean, the military has been used to quell protests before, or at least attempted to quell protests. But the gov the president hasn't unilaterally did something, um, you know, to this effect. So it is, it is interesting to think about. And, you know, 
what would happen in that scenario. So I appreciate you speaking to that because I know that is kind of difficult. Um, you can have your feet in both camps, you know, as a, as a veteran and as an activist. So it, it's difficult yeah. to, you know, to try to put yourself in both camps at the same time. I, well, I was also a military law enforcement oh, as okay. well. Yeah, it's not something I, I talk about um, as much uh, because I love getting into the meat and potatoes of, you know, health, the health care crisis that we're facing, yeah. ending forever war. And military law enforcement is a little bit different than civilian law enforcement. But, the, you know, it's the thing I've, I've, I've experienced quite a few um, different fields that are involved right now. And I think, you know, I mean, as as our district's next congressman, as another representative in the federal government, I know that there are so many amazing leaders stepping up around this country right now, whether it's creating content that can help get information out there or volunteering for people um, or contributing what they can uh, or just posting about it on social media, showing up, taking to the streets. That leadership gives me hope. It gives me faith. I don't think that there, I think that we're facing an unprecedented time of challenge and strife in, in, in U.S. history and an unprecedented amount of leadership 